In this problem, we are given a polynomial and we are asked to find its derivative, its second derivative, and the domain of each of those functions. So we'll just go ahead and get started with the domain. We see that there are no reasons to restrict the domain. We don't have any x's in the denominator that would cause undefined values. We, there's no opportunity to take the radicals of negative numbers. All real numbers should work just fine. So let's go ahead and take the first derivative. And we're just applying the power rule several times. Take the original coefficient, 10, multiply it by the original exponent, which is also 10. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent and get 9. Awesome. So now we take the original coefficient here, which is negative 5, multiplied by the original exponent, which is 8. Then subtract 1 from this exponent, and we get 7. And then we apply the same process here. Cool. So let's just combine some of these coefficients together to make it a little bit neater. 10 times 10 is 100, so 100x to the 9th. 5 times 8 is 40, x to the 7th. 2 times 6 is 12x to the 5th. And once again, we see there's no reason to restrict this domain. We still don't have any x's in the denominator. There are no functions in there whose domains are restricted. So the domain is, once again, all real numbers. So we can go ahead and plunge onwards to find the second derivative. We'll just repeat the same process that we were doing before. Take the original coefficient, multiply by the exponent, 9, and then we subtract 1 from that exponent. Same thing over here, 40 times the exponent, which is 7. Subtract 1 from the exponent to get 6. Take the original coefficient, multiply by the exponent, and subtract 1 from the exponent. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply out these coefficients and see what we get. 900 x to the 8th. 40 times 7 is 280 x to the 6th. And 12 times 5 is 60 x to the 4th. So that is our second derivative right there. And yet again, we find that there is no reason to restrict the domain. So we have nothing in the denominator that would cause undefined values. So the domain of this function and each of its derivatives are all all real numbers. And we have our first derivative here and our second derivative here. And that's our final answer.